Action creates action. Inaction creates more inaction. Just get moving. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to be more productive, and I'm actually gonna give you six habits to pick up so that you can be more productive in every single thing that you do. Now, why would you wanna be more productive? Well, it's very simple if you think about it. We all have 24 hours in the day. We all have 24 hours, whether you're a billionaire, whether you're a bum, you all have 24 hours in the day to get stuff done. And people, I've actually gotten emails before people saying, well, this doesn't make any sense because billionaires have people that work for them. Of course, but they had to get to become a billionaire. They had to do things to get there, right? And so we're gonna talk about the six keys, the six habits for being more productive. The first habit is super simple, but most people usually don't think about this, is to just get moving. One of the things that I tell people is that action creates action. Inaction creates more inaction. So when you're usually feeling like you don't want to do something, when you know, oh, I've got this thing that I've definitely got to do, I just really don't want to do it. Are you usually in the middle of taking action at that moment? Or are you usually sitting on the couch on Instagram, not getting things done? Usually when you don't want to do things, what you're actually doing is sitting around not doing anything. And so one of the simplest keys that you can have, one of the simplest habits that you can have to being more productive is when you don't feel like doing something, get your ass up off the couch, out of the bed, turn the TV off, put your phone away, and then just start moving. Whatever it is you have to do. You could do 50 jumping jacks. You could do 25 push-ups. Get your body physically moving, and that will actually start to get you moving into the direction that you want. One phrase that I love is to always be leaning forward. And what does that mean? It's, it's usually Marines and, and special ops that use these phrases is make sure that throughout the day you're always leaning forward. What does that mean? You're always leaning forward means you're just taking a little bit of action. You're just going a little bit towards the goal that you've set for yourself. If you're leaning backwards, that means you're starting to chill. And if you have stuff to do during the day, then you shouldn't be leaning backwards until after you're done or until five o'clock or six o'clock. So if you know from eight o'clock until five o'clock you're working and you're really getting stuff done, you should always feel like you're moving forward, like you're just leaning forward a little bit. And that means that you're supposed to just be taking some action. If you feel like not doing anything, the key is get up and just physically get your body moving. Because what happens is the chemicals start to change inside of your body when you get moving. What happens is your heartbeat starts to go and what happens is your breath starts to change and all of that prepares you mentally and physically to start moving into the direction that you want. So the very first thing is you just got to start moving and you've got to have what I like to call a get shit done attitude. You just got to get shit done. That's it. Because if you have an attitude of, oh, I don't have enough time. Oh, I'm just so tired today. My energy's not really where I want it to be. I've got so many things that I've got to do whatever it is, figure it out and get it done. One of the things you could say to yourself, instead of saying, I don't have enough time, just say that I don't care enough. And what you'll realize is if you say, I don't care, your brain starts to go, hold on, but I actually do care about that thing. And if I do care about that thing, maybe I should figure out a way to get it done. Because we're all busy. We've all got stuff to do. Businesses to run, families to help, families to run, spouses, everything that's going on. We've got things, everybody's always got something to do. But the difference is some people get it done and some people don't. So you gotta have that get shit done mentality of I just have to get moving. I just have to be leaning forward, starting my day and feel like I'm leaning forward in everything that I do. If I catch myself on the couch, if I catch myself on Instagram, if I catch myself in a negative mindset, I've just gotta physically get my physical body moving. That's, that's habit number one. Habit number two, as far as being productive, would be this, learn while you're on the go. One of the things that a lot of people love to do is they love to learn. They love to take time out in the morning and they want to read for 10 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever it is. And if we're talking about being productive, we're talking about getting more things done in the same exact amount of time. And so think about the ways that you can learn while you're on the go. If you're traveling to work, maybe you have to hop on the bus or maybe you have to hop on the subway to go to work. Can you learn in that time? Can you listen to a podcast? Can you listen to an audible book? Can you, you know, figure out some sort of way to read during that time if you're not actually driving a car? When you're showering, what does that look like? Are you listening to music when you're showering? Are you listening to nothing? Or are you listening to an audiobook and trying to learn and trying to grow throughout everything that you do? When you're brushing your teeth, what are you doing? 
you have to realize that if you're, if you're trying to be productive, you're trying to get more done in the exact same amount of time. So why don't you think of all of the times where there's dead space and how that can be filled with something that helps you grow, helps you get better, and helps you improve throughout your day? Because you're already taking a shower. Hopefully, you're already taking a shower. You're already brushing your teeth. You're already going to the bathroom. You're already traveling to work most of the time. How can you take that time and actually learn and grow instead of having to have time to actually learn and grow that's separate from that? I'm not saying don't take time and read in the morning before you go to work. You could definitely do that. But is there a way to be more productive and to get multiple things done at once, like traveling or showering or brushing your teeth and learning at the exact same time of doing that? So when we're talking about being more productive, that's going to help you be more productive to do two things at one time. The third tip that I'm going to give you is a thing called the Pomodoro Technique. If you've been following me for a while, you know I'm obsessed with the Pomodoro Technique. It changed my productivity massively. And as simple as possible, the Pomodoro Technique is this. Work for 25 minutes and then take five minutes off. And you only have one thing that you can do in those 25 minutes. And so you take 25 minutes and you focus hardcore. If you say, okay, I've got to get this project done. I'm going to do only this project for the next 25 minutes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a notebook right next to my computer. And anything that pops into my head, big, small, oh my God, I got to do laundry. I've got to call her back, whatever it is. I'm going to write it down, but I'm not going to do anything else except for write it down because I'm focused on just this one thing and you focus on one thing and one thing only for those 25 minutes, and then you allow yourself to have a five minute break. And here's the secret, during that five minute break, I usually like to do some form of movement. And the reason why is because they found that if you do some form of movement and then go into doing something, you usually are more productive after movement going into doing something. And so if you go and, you know, the way that I like to do it is I work really hardcore for literally just 25 minutes. I put my headphones in, I listen to binaural beats, and all I do is just work for those 25 minutes. After 25 minutes, alarm goes off, I get up and I do some form of movement. You could do yoga, you could do jumping jacks, you could do push-ups. I do a thing where I, you know, you take a jump rope and you do jump ropes and rope flow and all of these things to get my physical body moving because once again, I'm trying to lean forward. So when I'm taking my five minute break, I don't wanna be laying on the ground and going on Instagram because that's inactive. Mm. I want to keep my physical body moving because then I'm gonna go, okay, my five minutes is up. Is it easier for me to get off the couch or is it easy, easier for me to stop doing jumping jacks and then go, okay, my body feels fired up. My brain feels fired up. I've got the juices flowing. Now let's go back into being more productive. It's a lot easier to do it that way than to get off of the couch when you've been scrolling on Instagram for five minutes. So Pomodoro Technique, simple as possible. And you can Google, you know, my name, Rob Dial Pomodoro Technique. I teach exactly how to do this in a much more in-depth episode. It's all you have to do. 25 minutes on, five minutes off. Simple. So that's tip number three. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, do me a favor and hit that like button down below. It helps with the YouTube algorithm so that more people can see this message because it helps us get it out organically. So hit that like button and I appreciate you. Tip number four is to plan out your energy throughout the day. Everybody's different. Some people are really highly productive in the morning. Some people are highly productive in the afternoon. And then some people are highly productive late at night. You have to know who you are. Everybody's different. So if you watch me and I'm like, hey, I'm really highly productive from one o'clock, I'm sorry, from 10 o'clock until two o'clock, you might not be. And so you're gonna try to force yourself to be productive when I'm productive, that doesn't make any sense. So you've gotta know yourself. You've gotta know how you're productive. So the way that my day looks, just so you know, because I, I have planned out my energy throughout the day, is from the moment I wake up until 10 a.m. is my creativity. I always say there's Rob before the phone and then there's Rob after the phone. I don't look at my phone until 10 a.m. if I can. And so I try to allow my creativity to come through. I start thinking about the podcast episodes I need to record, the videos I need to record, um, the creative stuff that I need to get together with my videography team and start working on them with. And so I start thinking about all of the things that my creative brain can help me create in that time because I know that I'm most creative from you know the moment I wake up until about 10 a.m. Then I know that my most productive time of getting stuff done is from about 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. And that for me is my planning time. So like basically in the morning, I'll go, okay, I've got to create a podcast episode today. I'll think about the podcast episode. I'll start to get different ideas. Maybe I'll read something or I'll watch a YouTube video around that topic to try to get the, 
the mind flowing. And then from 10 a.m. until 1, I plan out all of my coaching sessions. I plan out my my scripting of the, the episodes. I start getting everything ready to go. I start setting up the cameras. I set up the microphone. I set up the lights. I set up everything that I need to in order to record. And that's my, my planning, my scripting, my getting things done from 10 o'clock until 1 o'clock. Because for me, that's when I have the most energy. From 1 o'clock until 4 o'clock is my second most energy that I have. That is usually where I do my recording. That's where I do all of the creation of the stuff that I thought about earlier that morning. And then I'll take all of that. I'll take all of the SD cards. I'll take the files and I'll send it all to my team and create whatever it is that we need to create. We'll get the fonts done for the videos. We'll get the titles done. And that's done from one o'clock until four o'clock. And then from about four o'clock until six o'clock is just getting things done that haven't been done for the day that were not high priority. But if I can get them done, I want to get them done. And so that's how I plan my day. And I plan it based off of the way that I know that my body feels. Because I know by six o'clock, my brain, I usually use as much of it as I possibly can. So by six o'clock, I'm like, I'm done. And I can check out and be done for the day. Hang out with my girlfriend, hang out with my dog, go out to eat chill, do whatever it is that we need to do. Usually we're traveling. So maybe we'll go on like right now we're in Sedona. We'll go on a hike, whatever it is that we need to do completely disconnect so that tomorrow when I come back and work again, I can be highly productive because I disconnected. I was hardcore in my work. Then I'm hardcore out of my work after six o'clock. And so once again, my creativity from when I wake up until 10 a.m., from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m., it's planning, it's scripting, getting all that stuff ready to go and putting it all on paper, I guess you could say. From one o'clock until four o'clock is recording, getting all of that stuff done, meeting with my team, making sure everything's right, posting it on the right social media platforms, all of that. And then from four o'clock to six o'clock is finishing up the things that need to be done today, emails, getting that type of stuff done, not the sexy things. But from four o'clock, it's like, I gotta get this thing done. All right, I'll do this thing right now. My goal, six o'clock, is I can shut everything off. Does it work every single day? No, sometimes I go to 6.30, sometimes seven o'clock, depending on what the day looks like. But I try to be done and then I'm done. And when I'm done, I close my laptop, close my computer, I'm done, completely checked out because that allows me to come back in the next day, high energy and ready to go. And that goes into number five with me. Tip number five is that you have to have a cutoff time. This is one thing that was really hard for me when I first started my business is I would work until eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 1 a.m. sometimes. And what I realized is that when I didn't have a cutoff time, I wouldn't get as much done, which is kind of weird because I would work more. But at the same time, I was also kind of frustrated with my work, frustrated with my job that I created. I was frustrated with it. And the reason why was because it was all consuming of my life. And it was like I woke up and I worked all day long and got all the stuff done. And then I went to bed and then I woke up and I started to kind of resent my work, which I love. I was resenting it because it came my life. It literally became my life. And I was reading a book called The One Thing by Gary Keller, who is a multi-billionaire. He has the biggest real estate company in the entire world. And he said, you have to plan your time off. And the reason why is because you come back, like I said, more productive. And if you think about it, if you have a cutoff time where you have to get done, you're going to get more stuff done. You're going to be more productive. And why are you going to be more productive? Because you have a cutoff time. So you're going to be highly productive. Make sure you get stuff done and make sure you you really are working at your highest capacity and not getting distracted by Instagram or Facebook or other people or text messages or any of that type of stuff. And so when you have a cutoff time, think about it. When is the most productive that everybody usually is? the day before they go on vacation. Why? Because they have to get things done because they're going to be gone and out of town for a week or two weeks and they know that they've got to get that deadline done. When are people usually the best at studying? The night before the exam. When are people usually getting the most stuff done for a project? The night before it's due. And so when you have a cutoff time, your brain actually works better with a cutoff time because you're going, I have to get this done because there are no other options. I know that at 6.30, I'm gonna go out with my girlfriend and go get dinner. We've already got plans. I have to be done at six. And so you have to, number five, have a cutoff time where you're definitely 100% going to be done with your work. Because once again, when you're working, you're hardcore working. When you're off, you're hardcore off. But that break allows you to be able to come back the next day and be highly productive. I'm the type of person, believe me, I used to think that I absolutely had to work until I was where I wanted to be in life. And I thought that I didn't deserve time off. It didn't deserve a day off. But if you're like me, I'm the type of person where my goals are like the horizon. I don't know if I'm ever going to fully hit my goals. I don't. 
Like they just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so if I lived my life that way, I would never have time off. And so you've got to plan your time off. That's a huge tip that I'll give you. And that's tip number five. And then six, number six is to prepare the night before. You know, if you're going to wake up in the morning and you're going to work out, you know, you're going to have your coffee and then work out first thing in the morning. How can you prepare the night before to make it even easier on yourself for the next morning? And you start to prepare ahead and get things done, which allow you to execute the next day. So if you're going to wake up, have coffee, and then go straight to working out, how would you make that easier on yourself? And how would you prepare the night before for that? Well, number one, maybe what I can do is I can get a coffee machine that automatically makes coffee. And it'll be up, you know, if I wake up at 6 a.m., it starts at 545. So that by the time I wake up, my coffee's already made. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the sugar, I'm going to have the, 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 the stevia out, I'm going to have the, the cinnamon out, and I'm going to have the, the milk that's right inside the door. So all I have to do is literally pour it into it, put my stevia in, put my, my cinnamon in, and all I have to do is take the milk out and pour it in there. Makes it simple, right? How else can I make it simple? If I know that I'm going to work out, how about I, I literally right next to the sink where I'm going to be brushing my teeth in the morning, I'm going to put my workout clothes there. I'm going to my workout shirt. I'm going to my workout shorts, my workout underwear. I'm going to have my socks. I'm going to have my shoes. And I'm going to prepare for success because sometimes we, re- we don't even realize that we're resisting doing things because things aren't fully prepared. And if you can remove different obstacles in your resistance, it makes it a lot easier. Right? Sometimes it's really hard to wake up. It's a lot easier to wake up when you can smell a fresh cup of coffee, right? It's a lot easier. And it's a lot easier to wake up when you know, all right, yeah, I got to go work out. But the good thing is I don't have to figure out what I'm wearing. I don't have to go find it. I don't have to go see if I have socks that are inside of the washer or dryer, make sure all of that's ready. It's like I've prepared for my success. You know, maybe you have your headphones that you listen to when you work out. How can you have your headphones out ready to go so you don't have to be searching for them? You literally wake up and you execute. Wouldn't that make your life easier? Do you see how you could be so much more productive if you take literally 15 minutes before you go to bed and just plan out how you can wake up and just execute? It's so much easier. And what you're doing is you're removing little pockets of resistance that happen to be existing in your life and you're just pulling them out. How can I make this easier? I'm gonna be drinking coffee anyways. What if I get a coffee machine that literally prepares it for me so it's done when I wake up in the morning? Boom. Okay, I know I'm gonna be working out in the morning. I have a strong resistance to working out in the morning. So maybe I put my clothes out, my socks out, my shoes out, everything. Boom. Okay, I know when I work out, I usually put my Bluetooth headphones in. How can I make sure that those are not in my bag and I have to go searching for them? Everything is fully prepared for me. And I'm just removing resistance. So all I gotta do is wake up and execute. And I wake up and what's happening? I'm not searching for things. I wake up and I'm already leaning forward. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. Today, we're going to be talking about the six steps to hit any goal you want. Coming up.